Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penge and welcome back to Rimworld where we continue the tale of our 12 colonists and their respectable amount of animals, although there are slightly less animals this time round than there were at the start of the previous part because last time out we did indeed lose our lovely dogs Arjun and Ms. Awesome Jay. They have perished, it's very very sad indeed. So we thought to help us out with a bit of hauling that we would let the dogs out. Who let the dogs out? We did. Because because the dogs are trained to haul, or some of them are, and we had various bits and bobs that we wanted to haul from around the map. So we've got, you know, various bits of granite and stuff like that. And there was stuff over here from the crash ship and stuff over here from one of the siege attempts and all that kind of stuff. So the dogs were, up until last part, kind of confined to it within the walls of the base. Which is fine, that was useful, they were able to go around and grab some stuff, but it was relying on all of our people to go out and grab these, and they weren't doing it as quickly as I would like, and there were things out here deteriorating outside, you know, under no roof and all that kind of stuff. So we let the dogs out, and for the most part, the dogs did okay. They went and picked up various bits and bobs, they grabbed stone, they grabbed components and all that kind of stuff, but then unfortunately there were predators. And our dogs actually became the hunted and we couldn't get people to them in time. So it said, oh, this, this dog is being attacked. You know, Arjun is being attacked by a predator. You better go and sort that out. But by the time we'd actually got any of our people with the shooty guns over to that particular predator, they'd already killed our poor dog. It was very, very sad. It was a terrible thing. So yes, we lost Ms. Awesome J and Arjun. It's very, very sad. We still do have some other animals, however. It's not like we're short on animals. I mean, yeah, we've still got quite a lot of them, I think. But but yeah, it's not nice to lose them, not in the way that they went either. It was very, very sad. You know, if they come in here and they die of old age or whatever, then, you know, at least they've had a good life. But that way they went out being attacked. It was a little bit sad. But there we go. So we lost two of our dogs. However, we did acquire a new animal. And that's this one just here. Now, this is a big surprise. And also, I'm informed in the comments that this is a relatively rare occurrence. So this Thrumbo here, Thrumbo number one, this Thrumbo self-tamed. So it must have been wandering around the map, just, you know, looking around, going, yeah, okay, it's nice around here. Yeah, lovely, nice place. Oh, what's that base over there? Those guys look good. I'm going to go and join them. And then we now have ourselves a Thrumbo, just wandering about, just Thrumbo number one, just, you know, wandering about the base, chilling out in here, just looking around and doing various bits and bobs. So that's very, very good. I'm very impressed. And they're quite good. They're quite good at doing the fighting. And if we can train up this Thrumbo to become an attack Thrumbo... We could use that. We could use you to go and attack some people. I mean, it's got a gigantic, big, kind of spiky thing on its head. It attacks people with that, I imagine. But as well, I imagine this has a lot of hit points. I imagine this can soak up quite a bit of damage because they're very, very big things. So yes, we'll definitely keep you. You're currently just in the base having a little wander about. So we're trying to train that up to go and do some attacking and stuff, which is very, very good. Um, the kill box. The kill box now has some turrets in, which is lovely because previously... It was just a very, very big, flat area with nothing in. But now it's got fancy turrets. It's got basic turrets. Still not quite complete. We need to put the turrets in the wall areas just there. But then once that's in, that's another eight turrets. So, you know, that's, that's not a small amount of steel. But when they're in... That will be the kill box pretty much sorted. We've also got some spaces around the place to put turrets in our sort of main base area, just in case people do manage to come through the walls or land in here, I don't know, via you know, sort of transport pods or whatever. So yeah, we'll put a few of them around just to give us a little bit of extra defence, just in case. Um, and also, our defensive wall thing down here is looking very good. So yeah, they're completing this bit off down the bottom. And then all across the south, we've got the wall bit there with the traps in, which will hopefully deter sappers from trying to come into the walls, because they might think, do you know what? They've got traps there, and I don't want to stand under trap, so I will go another way, and then hopefully they'll come through here, which is a way that we can defend, which is very, very lovely indeed. So there we go. That's what we did last time. I'm amazed we got the Thrumbo. I'm very, very impressed. And the first thing we've got to do, we've got to do something with the Thrumbo here, because Thrumbo is called Thrumbo number one. And, and as, yeah, as catchy as that is, I don't think we need to call you Thrumbo number one. So let's rename you, and I've got an idea in mind for Thrumbo number one. So away goes Thrumbo number one, and in comes Betty, because I like that. I can imagine you as a Betty just running around the place and going attacking people. I just like the idea of us all sort of lining up. You know, you've got Beryl and Mags and Kathy, and then you can go, right then, Betty, launch the attack, and then Betty can run off and go and attack some people. I just like the idea of that. So there we go. So Betty is healthy. And, right, Betty's currently in the dogs outside area, and that's something else we need to do. Also, Betty, oh, Betty's a male. <laughs> 
Do you know what? That's fine. You, I'm calling you Betty. That's fine. You've been christened Betty, and Betty it shall be. So age 42 of the Covenants of Geek, yeah, you're wondering about, right, you're in the dogs outside zone. Now, people in the comment section, and again, thank you, comment section. Thank you for keeping this entire game running. Um, they've said thrombos, that they're good. They're really good, but they're quite capable of taking care of themselves and they eat quite a lot of stuff. So we might just want to let Betty just wander about the map. We'll just let Betty have a little wander about. It's absolutely fine. We don't need to keep her within the confines of here because apparently they eat everything, including trees. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, yeah, they are massive things. So yes, I kind of understand it. But yeah, I just thought they would just eat normal food. But no, no, they eat trees. So we will let Betty out and about, I think. So uh, yeah, animals, let's go and let Betty into an unrestricted kind of zone. There we go. And also, whilst we're here, a few people have pointed this out as well. Um, some of our dogs are not trained to do any of this stuff here. So we've let the dogs out to do the hauling, but unfortunately, only two out of the five dogs that we've got can actually do hauling. Of course, excluding Michael, because he's only very little, so we can't do any hauling at all. Um, so yeah, so Alex B, uh, Labrador Retriever number four, the catchily named Labrador Retriever number four, and Spikel, um, yeah, they, they can only do the maximum of, they can attack, and they can guard, and they can be tamed, I suppose. But yeah, they cannot as yet do any rescuing or do any hauling. So yeah, do you know what? Let's take rescuing off for now. Let's just get him straight on the hauling. That's going to be way, way more useful. But there we go. Right, so that's that's some important things done there. So let's just move time on. And um, so yeah, we're trying to just sort of get ready for switching this thing on. So we've got a few improvements left around the base. So we do want to get some turrets into those spots there. We need to get turrets sorted just there. We do need to sort out the wall defences a little bit. We need some better walls coming down here. In fact, yeah, we put the traps in, didn't we? Of course we did. So once all these walls are sorted, once all that is done... We can then work on this bit of the eastern wall. We'll have to sort of work on this bit as well somehow. Um, and then also what we want to do is we want to start trying to get people some, some better armour. And I'm thinking we start with helmets. So let's go into here. I think it's in the fabrication bench. Uh, make marine armour. That's quite resource intensive. I don't know if we'll be able to get everybody with the fancy marine armour like kathy has gone. But I imagine we can get a number of people with the lovely marine helmets. Now, Wee Hours is sporting one of those. And yeah, marine helmet, 97% as well. That's a good one. That is 81%. Yeah, that's still pretty good. That's 61%. That's getting a little bit long in the tooth, that one. Ash is 172. Colonel's is 57. That's going to be removed very soon. So yeah, we need to make sure that we make quite a few of these. I mean, if we just... Let's go into the thing. Let's see if I can understand this again. Right, add Bill and make a marine helmet. So yeah, we'll make a marine helmet, please. Uh, and then we want to do until we have, I mean, we do want to do until we have 12, because there's 12 colonists, but then we have to go into this thing and do all this kind of stuff. So count equipped, um, yes. Uh, count tainted, no. No, we don't want to count tainted. Because that we don't want any tainted stuff. That's a bit rubbish. And then also we want to do the... Oh, this is confusing. Hang on, hang on. How does this bit work again? How is that going to work? Um, hang on. Right, any quality. Now, does that mean that we bring that down to, say, say 55? We've got three. We've got none. Hang on. Right, let me see if I can figure out how this works. But My brain isn't in gear yet. I've not had enough tea. Yeah, I think this is it. So make 12 of them. Count equip ones so we don't make 12 as well as these other ones that everybody is wearing because that's going to take a heck of a lot of extra resources. And then also only include the ones that are 55% or above in terms of, you know, in terms of their wear and tear sort of thing. So yeah, when that one that was a Colonel, was Colonel's one on 57% or something. So when that eventually wears down, in fact, we might want to put that on to 56, might we? So when that one wears down to 55% and she takes that off, then this thing will go, hang on a minute. We need to make another one of those. Let's make sure that we build another one of these things and get another marine helmet so Colonel can wear one. So there we go. I think that's about right. I mean, I'm sure if I'm wrong, I will either find out in the game or the comments section will tell me. I think that's about right. I think that's okay. And then crafting skill. Let's make sure that people who are good are actually doing this. Because this, these are going to be important. These are possibly going to be the difference between life and death when we are facing a gazillion, gazillion enemies. So let's make sure that it's people with a crafting skill of 14 or above that can actually get on with this. Now, I don't know how many people that actually encompasses um, crafting. Let's do it that way. So Mags, what is your crafting? 18. Oh, oh, right. It's going to be Mags. 
oh my goodness me, I've never really noticed that. Our people are really rubbish at crafting things, apart from Max, who is absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. Well, do you know what? Why don't we just, <laughs> rather than do that, why don't we just say, well, just, just Mags. Just Mags. Oh, there you go. We, that could have told me a lot easier. There you go. Mags. Yeah. Mags, get on with making us some marine helmets, please. Because, yes, we're going to need some form of defence. Also, can we just push that up to the top? I'd feel a little bit better about that moving to the top there. Just to make sure that that's actually, you know, job number one. What do we actually need? One advanced component. We've got 13, so it should be okay, and 40 plasteel. Now that is going to be where we fall down because we've only got 114. So we need to do either some trading with people that might come by or go and do some drilling to get some plasteel out the ground because, yeah, we're going to run out pretty quickly. Something else that we could do is we can remove this wall. And again, this was suggested in the comments, but this inner wall now serves no real purpose. That was the original outer wall of our base. And then we built this extra bit here to encompass a bit of nice soil there and the little sort of geothermal thingamabob. But yeah, we don't really need this anymore. This is now just a kind of superfluous thing that we don't really need. So let's go into here and let's go to structure and we shall deconstruct all that and all that across there as well, please. We might as well take that stuff apart. And that means we can, yeah, just sort of recycle some of that granite and bring it back into the base, use it to build more walls and such like. Where is Beryl going? Why aren't they just finishing these wall sections off? Why are you not doing that? Come on now. There we go. Cunic's at least delivering some stuff. Does Cunic build? Oh, Cunic does build. Oh, there you go. We normally see Cunic doing research, but we've stopped doing research because there's nothing else that we really particularly need. A few people have said... They said, why not just deconstruct all the research things? Deconstruct the fancy research bench. Deconstruct the multi-analyzer. I mean, we could even deconstruct the floor tiles, I guess, if we really wanted to. But we'll leave it there for now. We'll leave it there for now. If we get into dire straits when the, you know, when the big attack is going on, if we get into real trouble, then yes, I suppose we could dismantle that for resources and steel and components and what have you. But I think we'll leave it there for now. I think it'll be, it'll be a shame to remove it. This thing is... This thing has allowed us to build a ship. This this room is very important indeed. Many important scientific breakthroughs happened here. We should keep this just for sort of, you know, like, you know, sort of uh, like a museum piece almost. But, um, but yeah, we'll leave it for now. We can always take it apart if we need to at some later point. I think that south wall area is done all the way along. It is. Oh, that's very wonderful. Okay, right. Well, that means now we can get on with building the next bit of wall along here. So granite wall coming out that way and going all the way up there. Boom, like that. Nice and straightforward. Nice and simple. That shouldn't take too long, I wouldn't hope. I mean, okay, everyone's asleep now. I'll well, let you have a sleep. That's fine. You can go and have a little nap. And when you wake up in the morning, job number one, maybe take that apart. Job number two, get this thing sorted over here. And that'd be quite nice. That's quite a big bit of work they need to get done. And that'll be, you know, nice and out of the way. Um, another thing that we might want to do eventually, we might want to remove the doors. When we switch this thing on, when we switch on, not that thing, when we switch this thing on, the reactor, um, we don't really need to be, I don't imagine we need to be coming out this way. And if there's a door here, I imagine that they will see that as a bit of a weak point and maybe go for some doors. I mean, yeah, we would double door it normally. So I imagine we could just, just sort of seal that up so remove that, remove that, put a bit of wall there, put another trap or something nearby, just, you know, fill the gap with a trap, and then remove the doors and just make that solid, and possibly the same along here as well, and just make our sort of access points really, really limited. If we do need to go out and wandering about, we have to go out this way, but I would hope, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how much we're going to need to go outside. I've never switched on a Starship reactor before. Hutch Henson is passing by, an inventor. An inventor, you say, from the Isho Todo Dominion. Can we trade with you? No. Unfortunately, we cannot trade with you. That's a bit of a shame. What do we do with you then? You just sort of you just come in and just have a little look around. You have extremely low expectations, but well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. You're a trigger happy pyromaniac psychopath who is incapable of firefighting or social interaction. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. What an interesting character you are. Um, I mean, okay, you can't really get in because our sort of inner door thing is shut just there. But it's fine. We'll have a chat with people. Don't start any fires, please, Hutch. If all of a sudden some fire breaks out, we know who it was, Hutch. We've got our eyes on you. Also, we're going to need some more wood, I think, to construct the rest of the traps to go along sort of this little bit of wall here and then across the top wall. We've got, ooh, 
Oh, hang on. That was a major break risk. Who's almost a major break risk? Croc. Okay, well, go inside, Croc. Go, go, and, go and relax for a bit. Oh, of course, Croc got divorced. Croc got divorced by Colonel last time out, and that is bringing... Oh, that is, that is a hefty mood here, isn't it? Minus 20. We made a commitment, and they just tore it apart. Yeah, okay. Of course, because, yes, Croc last time did have a little bit of a breakdown over in front of the telly. Just had a bit of a binge eat in front of the television. That, uh, completely understandable. That's fine. Um, okay, yeah, right, okay. That's, that's going to be affecting you for a good long while. Another 10 days. Wow. Okay, yeah, that's quite that's quite a big mood debuff sort of thing, isn't it there? But okay, fine. Well, you're going to have to deal with that. Um, yeah, we need to cut down some trees. Now, I do think we've got... Yeah, we have quite a bit of wood. 1,261. A solar flare. Okie dokie. Wonderful. So all the electrical devices have turned off. Okay, right. Message understood. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll get ourselves some more trees chopped, I think. So orders. Chop wood. I mean, if we can chop wood that's in our own borders. Oh, yes. All of those things can go. Those trees in there as well. I mean, it's not that long since we did this, is it? Is it that long since we actually set you know to, to chop trees down in our own kind of grounds i don't think it was that that long ago but yeah there's loads there absolutely loads of them okay that's good what about that one can we get that one yes uh and any out here as well just see if we can grab a few out there um no none of those oh yeah all of those yeah we'll grab a massive stockpile of wood because we might need that to start replacing traps and at some point it might come to be that we run out of steel to replace these traps here in the trap corridor so we may have to replace them with wood. So we'll stockpile a bit of wood, I think. Have we got enough room to stockpile any wood? I don't think we have. I do not think we have much in the way of wood stockpiling going on. Um, right, would, does wood, would it deteriorate if it was outside? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Hang on, there's a bit of wood there. Deteriorating. Yes, it would. It would. Huh? Um, so maybe... Maybe we adjust this a bit, because I don't imagine the sandstone blocks are going to deteriorate, nor is the steel. Maybe we can make ourselves a little outside area, maybe over here somewhere, or maybe over here, actually, thinking about it. If we put it over here, people could people could chuck things over the walls, like grenades or rockets or something. If we put it here, it's a little bit less likely to be targeted. So make ourselves another zone, another one of those. So if we copy those settings... Um, and then can we just make a zone here and then just paste that in and then just take out the wood and anything that's going to sort of deteriorate outside? Let's do that. So, right, make a new zone, a new sort of temporary stockpiling zone. Uh, just there will do the job. Thank you very much. And we will paste those settings in and then go into here. Um, OK, so what have we got? Chunks. Yes, we will allow those things because they're not going to deteriorate. Items. No, no neuro trainers, no items allowed, because they will fall apart. I don't think any manufactured stuff should go outside. Nope, because that will deteriorate as well. Um, and raw resources, plant matter, no. Stone blocks, yes. Yeah. So wood, no. Uranium, that surely must be able to go outside. It's unlikely we're going to dig much up. Uh, steel, plasteel, jade, not that we've really got any of that around. And then, yeah, all the different stone blocks. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Now, I don't know if people are going to start moving bits and bobs around from there into there. I am not entirely sure. Um, it might be a good idea, actually, here, with this one, let's take out, let's say, what is there a lot of? There's quite a lot of steel, quite a lot of blocks. Why don't we take out the blocks from here? Say, no, don't store stone blocks in there, and they can move the stone blocks out down to here, and that frees up a bit of room in here so we can get some more wood. And the solar flare has ended, which is lovely. So all the power comes back on, all the lights come on, all that kind of stuff. That is very, very welcome. And one thing that people did suggest in the comment section was that we should check on the wildlife and just see if there are any predators. And if there are any predators, we should go and possibly kill them to stop them trying to eat our dogs. However, now I don't think a megasloth is a predator. I'm pretty sure megasloths do not go and, you know, kill other animals. I'm not entirely sure about that, but, I mean, yeah, they do have a 10% chance of attacking if you go and attack them. Muffaloes, no alpacas, turkeys, hares, rats, squirrels. So there's no sort of lynxes, there's no cougars, there's nothing like that. There are a couple of mega sloths. I don't know, are they predators? A giant solitary herbivore. No, absolutely they are not predators. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. 
I'm very happy with that right now. That's a good thing. So we don't need to go hunting predators right now. We will have to keep our eye on that though, because at some point some sneaky carnivore is going to sort of creep onto the map and maybe go preying on our dog. So yeah, we'll have to just keep an eye out. And this bit of wall is finished. It is now complete, which is lovely. And they've gone and put a roof on it as well. I hadn't really noticed, but they've got roofs. It's like a nice sort of roofed area there, which is lovely. So there we go. So that bit is now done. So the whole of this bottom bit of the base has now got the lovely double walls in, bar the slightly sort of dodgy potential risk there of one door. But yeah, we'll come to that. Well, just before we're going to switch this on, we will come to that and we'll, yeah, we'll sort the doors out. They are also taking this apart. That is very encouraging as well. There you go. Take the door apart. That gives us some more blocks back. Right. We need to look at this bit here. I suspect this is going to be a bit of a pain because I don't think we can build on this. And I think I was aware of that. Somebody in the comments did say, I don't think you can build on that mud stuff. So let's have a look, shall we? So can we build, we can build there and we can't, ah, right, okay. So we can build, yeah, we're, we're gonna have spots there where we can't build properly. We might have to go on the inside of this. We might have to go on the inside of that wall, which is not ideal. Um, okay, right, first things first, so security, let's get some trap, so we'll put trap, 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 and trap. So that'll do for there, and we'll just sort of sort that bit out, and then also we will go along here, and we will put traps, no, 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 maybe not there, uh, hang on, hang on, how's that going to work? I expect the wall to go up from there, yeah, so that's going to be, I know, but can, then that, that, can we do that? Is that how that's going to work? Because then there's going to be trap there, but the wall's going to go up from here. Uh, yeah, that should be fine, shouldn't it? Hang on, hang on. Let's just, let's just pencil that out. Let's pencil that out. Get rid of that. Cancel that thing. Bye-bye now. And um, we'll go to structure. Let's just say we get granite wall going up here um, and then there. And then again, we'll seal this bit off. So for now, that's going to look a little bit weird, but then we can build all the way across there. I assume to pretty much... Oh, that's really irritating. <laughs> okay. To there. We'll put a little thing there just to notify ourselves that that's the furthest we can build. That, oh, this is a bit of a fiddle, isn't it? Okay, fine. We've got to faff about with this. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so in here, we'll just put traps all along the way. Yeah, it's a shame you can't just sort of click and hold to go across with the traps. You have to sort of individually click. But, okay, let's lay a load of traps across the top of here. Okay, that is a lot of traps laid out across the top. That is an awful lot of traps. I mean, Kunik's already on it. Kunik has already constructed one trap, and then that trap is also waiting for resources. That's very efficient. That's terrifyingly efficient. Well done, everybody. So yeah, we'll soon be able to do this bit. We can put a wall around this bit, and then yes, it's going to be this bit that's going to be a bit of an issue. How about then? Because we don't need this to be that big anymore. Let's shrink that zone down... Um, oh no, but we can't shrink it down too much. Hang on, where's the zone for this thing? How, oh, that's right to the edge of there. Joe, so we can build across here, I think. Then we can build across here, and we might just have to lose the top of that zone there. But I think that'll be absolutely fine. If we just chop that bit off, there we go, that'll do. And then we'll just have to sort of faff about with this corner bit ever so slightly. It'll be a little bit of a bodge, but I'm sure we can make it work. Do you know what? Just for the sake of completeness and to maybe give ourselves a tiny little bit of extra security, we'll put a trap just here. So by this wall section just here, we weren't going to do anything with this, but I think we might want a trap just there. And then we'll have some wall going across to this sticky out bit there. Because I think maybe at the minute, if somebody does come in and thinks, ah, this is an easy way in, they could just sort of tunnel their way in through that wall there. And then maybe that wall there, well, you know, this stone here, they can make their way in there and come through this way. And that would be bad. That would be a bad thing. We don't want them to be able to do that. So yeah, we might just you know nip that in the bird right now. We'll just stop them doing that, I think. So yeah, this will be, this will help with that. I don't know if that'll work. I'm not entirely sure if that's actually worth anything, but we'll give it a go. We'll, we'll get on with that. They're doing a very good job of putting down all of these traps. They're doing a marvellous job of doing all this stuff. And you know what? And I'm not going to say the word that I said before. A muffalo has self-tamed and Mags and Alex B have formed a bond. Oh, have they? Oh, okay. Oh, and all the animals can haul now. Oh, this is wonderful news. Okay, we'll get them to do whatever the other thing was. Rescuing. That's absolutely fine. Um, we don't want you to be able to guard. And muffalo number one. I'm really sorry, my phone number one, but we, we do not want you. We do not want you amongst our kind. Uh, we may possibly have to 
get rid of you slightly. We don't want any more animals. We won't watch it happen. It's fine. We'll do it nicely. We'll do it all very, you know, very sort of safely and, and kindly and all that kind of stuff. But yes, Muffalo number one, I'm very sorry, but we don't want any more animals. Thank you very much. I, I'm flattered that you think our place is lovely enough to come and live in. I genuinely am very, very pleased. But no, no, thank you. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll pretend you went away. We'll just pretend you went away back to your Muffalo friends and that we didn't kind of, you know, cut you up a bit and turn you into some delicious breakfast items. An exotic goods trader is passing. This is very encouraging indeed. Have they moved all the blocks down here? Yes, all of the blocks have gone down there. What's that? Marble. Oh, that's very lovely. We've got some marble blocks. And um, that has freed up a little bit of room in here. Um, yeah, I'm very tempted actually. That's the thing where we burn the, the sort of the sort of steel slag chunk things. Why don't we take that off? Let's not store those things in here. So say steel slag chunks, no. I think down here it should be set to yes. Yeah, we'll move all of those down to here. And then the thing that actually melts them down to steel is just here. So they can just sort of run through that way. That'll make a little bit more room in here. Um, okay, right. Where's the, um, where's the beacon thingamajig? Hang on, let's just click on a thing. Can we just see power? Can we see any kind of power? Hang on, right. Go to power. Um, it is, where is the beacon thingamajig? There it is, right, okay. So it's currently up there. Um, it is over some of our, it is over some of the Devil Strand. And I'll be honest, that's probably people going, no, make hats out of Devil Strand. I mean, I've made lots of hats out of the Devil Strand. And uh, yeah, make coats, make this, that, the other. I'm going to be kitting people out in armor. I'm not really too bothered about making sure that people are wearing, you know, dusters and all that kind of stuff. We want people in armour. So when we eventually do switch that thing on and we get attacked by a gazillion things, they don't all die very quickly. So maybe we could sell some of the Devil Strand. Uh, right, Croc, your time is now. Come down here and have a chat with Draft Interstellar, who are the exotic goods traders. Let's hope that they've got some Plasteel. Because we've got 34 right now which is no good. Yes, they have 350 Plasteel at 10 a piece. That's very good for us because last time out, we acquired a heck of a lot of money. We acquired so much money. So we've got 3,529, which is utterly perfect. We could just buy all of that right now. I oh, know we couldn't. We couldn't because, hang on, what? 3,616 that way. 10 things at 350 is 3,500. Hang on, what's going on there? Why are we giving them 3,660? <laughs> what? What? Have I, is something else active on this thing? Okay, right. I'm very confused. I'm very confused and very befuddled and I don't really know what's going on there. Um, okay, that's very odd. They do have some other neuro trainer things. Ah, oh, if there was a medical one or a shooting one or something, I absolutely would have bought one of those. I absolutely would have got one. Um, no, they've got a prosthetic heart. I don't think we've got anybody who's got heart problems. I'd like to be able to go and check. It'd be lovely if we could just go and have a look and then come back to the same trade screen. Um, a bit of gold. How much gold have we got? 65. We can probably dig up gold. Um, Arcotech things are hugely expensive, so we won't be buying any of those. Um, anything else we really want to buy in? Some Glitterworld medicine would be lovely. That would be great but we haven't really got anything to sell them. So unless we take less Plasteel and then pick up some Glitterworld Medicine, we could sell Betty. We could sell Betty the Thrumbo for 2,832 monies, but that's probably a bad, that's probably a bad deal. Um, okay, no, we're not going to do that. I'm a little bit confused as to the numbers here. I don't fully understand how, how this is calculated. I mean, are they taking a, an extra cut on top of this or something, or is it to do with the... The traders I mean he gets plus 18 does croc i don't fully understand okay it's fun whatever right how about then let's bring this down to 300 we'll have 300 of your plasteel that's 3100 we owe you which again doesn't seem to make sense but okay and then how about we get ourselves just a little bit of the glitter world medicine let's get a little bit of that maybe five of that which is lovely. So, well, a five of that. Is there anything else that we desperately need to buy? This might be the last time we can actually buy anything <laughs> because we're going to be a bit short of monies. We've got four Glitter World Medicine. Do you know what? Let's get six to make that a nice round 10 afterwards, which is lovely. So, 300 Plasteel coming in. That'll be helpful to make lots and lots of helmets. It is going to deplete our money quite considerably. I'd love to buy some other things. A mega screen television. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um, 
However, I don't really think we need anything else. Um, yeah. Okay, why not? Yes, absolutely. Go on. We'll buy all that stuff. There's probably people watching this now going, no, but yeah. Okay, fine. Well, it's done now. There we go. So much stuff has landed down here. Um, oh, right. Hang on. Farmer, what are you doing? You're hauling steel slag chunks. Can you get this inside, please? I would rather you got the Glitterwell medicine indoors just so it didn't fall apart and then carry on with whatever it was you were doing. Oh, getting plasteel. Oh, good. Yeah, bring the plasteel in. We can make loads of helmets with that. And I think Wee Hours is putting the final touches on the last wooden trap to go along this northern wall just here. Yes, she was indeed. This is very wonderful. Okay, right, structure. So granite wall can go across there, and then granite wall can go all the way across there, and it can go to just here. Now, what are we going to have to do with this? We might have to put a bit there, and then a bit there and build across to... Oh yeah, there's going to be a bit of a weakness here, isn't there? There's going to be a bit of a vulnerability on this side. Right, we're going to have to sort this out a little bit. So a door, build a copy just there on that side, please. I think you can still get in because that thing only takes up that space. So you can get in through there. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then we'll have to build across. So that thing is going to have to expand down a little bit there. And then it's going to have to shrink because that's going to be full of uh, full of a wall. There's going to be a wall across there. And then that can come down here and that will double wall this bit. And we can put traps in it. And then, yeah, this effectively is the outer wall. So we're going to build the inner wall. So we need to put the traps in. OK, right. That that looks like it might work. And then we'll do that over there as well. We'll make sure that's all lovely. OK, right. We might need a bigger... We might need a bigger cremation area. If everyone's going to come in here and get themselves killed by our crack team of shooting people and also loads of gun turrets, we might need a slightly bigger area than that to burn the bodies and such like. Um, okay, we'll have to ponder that. Maybe at some point we just have to get rid of... I know we can't really get rid of these bits here because if we get rid of the plants growing in here, then trees will grow and then these things won't work properly and they won't have power for the turrets and it'll all be a disaster. Um... Okay, we'll need to think about what we do with that. Maybe, hang on, hang on. Could we just bring it round here? Just bring it down to here. I don't really want people seeing the bodies. Though. That's why it's tucked away in this corner. That's why it's over there. So people don't actually see the bodies. So they don't get a big sort of mood hit. Um, okay, right. Well, we'll have to deal with that later. That should be okay. If somebody gets on burning the bodies really quickly, which maybe we'll make sure they do actually do, then that'll probably be fine, maybe. Okay, so there is a rainy thunderstorm going on, so I'm going to expect a few lightning strikes around the place and maybe a few little fires and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was going to say this earlier, I think I got a little bit distracted by something. I don't know what I got distracted by, a flashy light or a button or something. Yeah, something relatively insignificant. It happens, I'm very easily distracted. Um, Rimworld has been, and, and yeah, I'm not going to say the word, I'm not going to say the word that begins with Q. Rimworld has been um, less eventful, shall we say of late which does make me worry it makes me very concerned that something big is coming i mean in one of the previous parts with the one a couple of parts ago we did see an awful lot going on i mean there were ships and there were sieges and there was animals coming in and there was loads and loads of stuff going on maybe rimworld sort of you know it peaked at that point and went right i've thrown loads of stuff no I'll, I'll i'll give them a little i'll give them a little breather now but I'm awaiting something terrible to happen. Oh, there's a bit of lightning hitting over there. I mean, fortunately, it is raining. The rain will obviously put out these fires in due course. That'll be quite helpful. Bit of fire down there. Bit of fire over there. There was something up there that won't bother us. Um. So, so yes, indeed. I'm just sort of, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the thing to come down here to go, do the terrifying sort of noise with the flashy red icon. And it would just say, you know, mega gigantic uber titan robot discovered. It's coming to stamp on your heads. And it would just be this massive big mega robot or something just coming in. It would just walk all over us. I'm just waiting for Rimworld to just do something spectacular to us because it's been relatively uh, lenient in recent days. And amidst the storm, a bulk goods trader is on the way. Okay, hello there. Oh, and there's an eclipse. Oh my goodness me, wasn't there an eclipse last time? Okay, fine, another eclipse has happened. So yeah, that's not good for our solar power generation, is it? That's generally bad. And it struck right in the middle of the day. 
That's very unfortunate. Okay, right, Croc, go over here and have a chat with, with Walter. Okay, go and have a little word with Walter and see what Walter has for sale. I mean, we might need to sell quite a lot of stuff first in order to then be able to buy some stuff off Walter. And um, what does Walter have? Have you got any plasteel, Walter? Have you got any plasteel? That's going to be really, really useful. It does not look like you have, unfortunately. Um, okay, right. Well, let's go through and just see if there is anything that we want to buy or sell to Walter. Okay, we're going to buy a couple of things off of Walter. So thing number one, we're going to buy 34 components. That's all of his components. We're going to need those to make loads of turrets in order to repair any turrets that get damaged. And then also down here, we're going to buy all of Walter's steel. Because again, we're going to need lots of that to build turrets and repair turrets and then get everything else sorted as well with power cabling and what have you. And yes, we can go and dig for this. I know we can go and dig for this, but if somebody's selling it, I kind of feel like we might as well just stock up on this. And it's not like we haven't got anything that we can sell him to make up this massive amount of money. We've got an awful lot of stuff that we can sell. We've got loads and loads of things. So let's just go through and actually get rid of quite a few bits and bobs, you know, like cloth bedrolls. I don't think we're going to be going on a journey again at any point soon. So if we do need to actually go on a journey, we'll just make some more cloth bedrolls. So we can get rid of things like that for a start. And already that's come down a little bit. So let's just go through and we'll just sell stuff that we don't need. Like those flak pants then are not going to be worn by anybody. So we'll go through, we'll get rid of stuff we don't need, and we'll see if we can actually bring this number down a little bit. Okay, there's various bits and bobs we can sell to good old Walter. There's things that we're not going to be using anymore. So flak pants, 55%, that hat, 56% nearly the end of its life get rid of this cloth jacket get rid of various skins and leathers and what have you we've got over 1100 cloth so we'll get rid of 500 cloth on him as well and this is interesting we're going to get rid uh, of 269 units of what i can only assume is our premium chocolate because we seem to have two kind of chocolate entries here so this chocolate here there's 225 units of that and that costs one pound 12 per unit However, this chocolate here, we've got 269 units of that, and that costs $2.12 per unit. So we're getting rid of the fancy chocolate because it's worth more, and then keeping this chocolate. I don't know why we're in sort of why there's two different piles of chocolate. I don't really know why there's two different entries for that. I can only assume that this, this chocolate here is your basic. Yeah, it's okay, it's nice, it's chocolatey, but this chocolate here the fancy chocolate that's expensive. This is your premium chocolate. This is your lovely sort of, yeah, your Belgian master chocolatier chocolate. It's got high milk content. It's got sugar. I don't know where we've got the sugar from. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, we've got milk. We've got milk from the animals. So maybe that's what we did. Oh uh, yeah, it's probably got, you know, bits in it as well to make it tasty. A bit like food bits, like fruit, not just bits. <laughs> no, it's like bits of gravel. I mean, like, you know, nice things like berries or, or you know, something else like that. Nice things, not just like bits of gravel. Um, so yeah, this is probably got, this is your proper fancy chocolate. I don't know why we've got two lots, but we're get, getting rid of the fancy chocolate, which makes us quite a nice bit of money. And so now with all that done, we owe 202 monies to Walter. And I think maybe now it's time to think about getting rid of some of our animals because it's not going to be that long until we switch this thing on and then lots of people are going to come and kill us. And then whoever survives, if anybody survives, they're going to get in this and they're going to fly away. And then they're going to leave the animals here. And I don't like the idea of the animals just sort of wandering about the base looking sad. You know, nobody here anymore. Nobody's planting the crops for them. They're just wandering about this sort of very empty, sad sort of place. I'd like to think that maybe they're going to have a better life somewhere else. So I think maybe, maybe it's time we say farewell to Miss Bristly, Miss Sibob, Abrexas and Sasquatch. Because I don't think we particularly need them right now. The dogs will keep because they can now all haul and that will make things nice and straightforward for us. Michael the dog will obviously keep because he's an absolute icon of this whole thing. He's still around. He was there at the start. He's going to be there at the end. We're going to you know, bring him with us on the spaceship. Um, Betty will keep because she can go and kill stuff because she's massive. Um, but yeah, I think maybe Miss Bristly and Miss Sibob, yes, they provide a bit of milk. I think we can live without that. And I think they provide like some sort of fur and stuff, don't they, as well. We're okay. We're okay. I think we can cope. I think we can cope. And then a Brexus and Sasquatch. I mean, Sasquatch is getting on a bit. He's getting on a bit. So we might as well just, you know, let him go and see a bit of the world. Let him go and see a bit of the world before he eventually passes of old age. And a Brexus can go with him to keep him company. So I think maybe it's time that they go, that they depart. However, I have checked what meat Walter is selling. He's selling quite a bit of cat meat, which is 
a bit weird, but okay. Um, goat meat and then some pork. You just have some pigs up here. So we're going to do this, but Croc is going to make assurances with Walter. He's going to say, Walter, we'll give these animals, and that's fine. They're good animals, but you must promise not to kill them and eat them. Do not chop up Miss Bristley and turn her into breakfast. Don't chop up Miss Sipop and make her into a stew or whatever. You must look after these animals. There must be a good level of care. You must really you know, treat them and talk to them and make them feel welcome and all that kind of stuff. Because they've done they've done wonderfully for us. And I also noticed that I don't think he's got any um I don't think he's got any sort of animals with him, any pack animals. So they might be able to help him out a bit. They can haul all his stuff round. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff. He's got a lot of bits and bobs that he's carrying around with him. So I think it may be time to say farewell to Miss Bristly, to Miss Sibob, to Abrexus, and to Sasquatch. Which brings us some money back in, which is nice. Uh, Walter's got enough money to pay for that, which is splendid. And it kind of means that we've got four less animals to worry about. So four less animals to feed and to try and keep alive when eventually attacks happen and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and yeah, they can go on and they can just live lovely lives out on the road with Walter, who has assured us that he's not going to chop them up. And we'll be listening, Walter. We'll be listening. We've got a comm system. We'll know. If you do something to them, Walter, we will know and we will find you. And when we leave this planet, Walter, we will fly the spaceship over you and shoot you with the lasers that we're going to fit momentarily. I mean, they're not on now, Walter, but just you wait till we fit lasers to this. So don't you mess. <laughs> don't mess with our beloved animals because we'll come and get you, Walter. But I think that's the best thing that we can do. Take them off our hands. Give them to Walter. They can help Walter out. They can go and see the world a little bit. They don't want to be cooped up in these walls anymore. So yes, here we go. So we're going to get ourselves quite a nice pile of stuff. And also, yes, we're going to get rid of some animals. So farewell to Miss Bristly, Miss Sibob, Abrexus and Sasquatch. You have all been... Well, okay, Miss Bristly and Sibob haven't been actually around that long. You know, they, they've been okay. They've been sort of useful. A Brexus and Sasquatch, they've been around for a long, long time. You have both been marvellous, marvellous members of the colony. But now we must say farewell. Enjoy your global travels. There we go. It is done. Our relations have gone up with those guys. And we are now down to not many animals at all. Oh my goodness me. Some dogs and a thrumbo. <laughs> there you go. Oh, and a fire. Lovely. Whereabouts is the fire? Oh, it's right up here. Oh, there's a... Hang on, there's a person on fire. Do you know what I'm going to put out the person? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> there was someone on fire. Um, have we got anybody over here? Have we got any of our people over this way? Could we not go and help this? This person is, is in pain shock. Can we not go and help them? Are we not allowed to do that? Or is that bad? We can rescue them, I think. Uh, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to capture them because that will anger them. Um, yeah, let's, let's rescue them. I think, hang on. How bad are they? How bad are they? Um, health-wise, I oh, know they're okay. I oh, know that's, I oh, know that's Croc. Hang on, no, no. Where's, where's the person that might be on fire? Yeah, they're, they're burnt quite a bit. Yeah, maybe we should just, you know, save them and stuff. I don't know. I mean, where's Croc? Who's the nearest person to here? Kathy, can you save them? Yeah, go and rescue them. Absolutely, go and help them. Go and save their life. <laughs> Bring them down here, and we'll see to it that they're looked after. Um. That gun, we can't take that. I oh, know it's biocoded to that person as well. It's absolutely biocoded to that person. Okay. Oh, maybe they did have some pack animals and they just didn't want to sell them. They had, by the look of it, three muffalo. Well, now you've got five muffalo and two camels as well. So there we go. Wonderful. Oh, that's. It's sad. It's sad, but I think it's kind of a necessary thing. I think we now need that to happen. And also, that might mean that we can put an area up here of corpses like a nice sort of corpse zone up here because um because yeah it's less likely we, we don't really need this space at all now for growing crops and things we definitely don't need that so um so yeah okay hang on a minute we'll copy those settings we'll create a new zone and we'll have stockpile zone just there like that and come out of that and then we will click oh, no we won't i'll do that wrong there we go and paste those settings in Lovely. And I noticed that they've got that little bit done there as well. So let's get the wall in whilst we're here. I can hear a fire burning away somewhere. I'm sure they're on it. I'm sure they're sorting out the flames. Where's the fire? Um, it's over there. Why do we care about a fire over there? Is that some sort of home zone thing? Hang on. Hang on. Um, clear. Home. Yeah, and, and away. I don't care about over there. I don't care about that bit there. <laughs> Why are we putting that up? That could be a concern. Big fire up there could be a concern, but okay. I also noticed that... What? What? Alex B. 
One of the dogs is asleep on a trap and stuck in the wall. You silly thing. Right, we're going to make a hole in the wall now. We're going to weaken our defences to get you out, you fool. I'm just looking closely and I think Alex B might actually be one of the builders from Academia in disguise because we know that they often do this kind of silliness. They often brick themselves in. So there you go, Alex B. Your identity has been revealed. I love the fact that the Thrumbo is asleep at the foot of Kunik's bed. The Thrumbo is absolutely massive. It is utterly enormous. Look at that. Just, it just takes up like the space of the bed would and then a little bit more as well. I wonder if it makes a noise. Like would a thrombo snore? Does Betty snore? I do not know. I'd be intrigued to know. I'd love to know if that was actually a thing. I'd love to know if it snored. But okay, I guess we'll, we'll never know. I'm going to say yes though. And the trade caravan is leaving. Farewell. Farewell Abrexas. Farewell Sasquatch. Farewell Miss Sibob. And farewell Miss Brisley. You shall indeed be very, very missed, but away with you. On to pastures new and on to exciting new adventures. Do you know, I need somebody to get on removing this wall bit right now because poor Alex B is wandering about in here amidst all those traps and that's never going to end well, is it? So deconstruct this, please, really, really quickly. Don't walk on the traps. Don't walk on the traps. And now you can come out if you would be so kind. Come out of here. There we go. Splendid. Right. And then just build that back again. Just put that back and make sure no dog goes in. No, don't hold the bricks. <laughs> Damn you, your efficiency dogs. They've put the bricks away. We need the bricks back. Okay, fine. I'm sure somebody will get to that sooner rather than later. Okay, we're going to have to force somebody to build this because uh, Spikel just went wandering around inside the, you know, the trap tomb just there. So, um, you, are you doing this? Oh, no, Hull is already on it. Hull is going to build the granite wall. There we go. Splendid. No dogs are now stuck inside the wall section. That is lovely. And then the final thing is this bit here. And I think that, when they've got the roof on, I'm not too bothered about the roof, but that is brilliant. That is very good indeed. Our entire base now is double walled, apart from the little sort of flimsy door sections, but we can sort that out. That is wonderful. That, that's one of our big things that I wanted to get done. And we've got it done with a minimum of fuss as well. With a minimum of fuss. Rimworld, what, what are you doing? Why are you being so lenient on us? <laughs> what kind of untold horrors are you going to throw at us next time? I do not know. But I think, with that done, I think that's a good point to leave it for now. And we'll come back next time. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of the, um, the helmets going on there as well. There's a lot of the marine helmets going on. Hang on, gear. That is the marine helmet, isn't it? It's Colonel the only one without one. Colonel has got the plasteel flak helmet on, which is probably very good. Everybody else has got a proper, decent helmet on. We've got 84 plasteel. Is Mags actually working on one? Yes, Mags is working on one. So everybody will soon have a proper, decent helmet on as well. Now, how much is it to actually make the proper marine armour? Uh, marine armor details it's 100 plasteel we don't have enough we've burned through all our plasteel to make helmets for everybody so we're gonna have to have a serious think about what we actually want to do with that so gear wise yeah so kunik there has got flak pants on and a marine helmet but just wearing just a shirt just a shirt and a jacket you might need some slightly better armor there you might need like a flak jacket or something on so we might need to have a little think about that next time about whether we actually just tool people up just go right there you go everyone's tooled up with with you know various things that we've got now with flak jackets or do we wait to get some plasteel and then make everybody marine armor I don't know. I don't know what the best sort of course of action is. I mean, I'm tempted. I, I really want to press this thing and get it switched on. I think we're becoming more and more ready as you know, the days go by. And I think Rimworld has helped us out a little bit here. It's given us a little bit of a hand by not throwing too much stuff at us. It's allowed us to complete various bits and bobs. But yeah, I don't just want to dive in. And then obviously on day one and the first wave comes in and all our people just get <laughs> brutally butchered. I don't want that to happen either. So um, so yeah, I don't know whether to just wait until we get loads of plasteel and then give everybody the marine armour. Or do we give everybody just flak jackets and flak pants with those helmets and then just leave it at that? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll ponder it. Leave your thoughts in the comments, please. I would be I would be intrigued to know. But yeah, we'll finish up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in RimWorld. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time.
This is going to end badly. This is going to end badly, I suspect. <laughs> My God, it's Pengu. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have to put the engine bit. I feel that might be a problem in making a car. I've broken the windscreen. It's, en it's ending badly. It's ending very badly indeed. I might crash into a tree. How do I do any of the stuff with this car? 